Yep, we are live. Uh, give me a sec. I will prepare everything for the recording. Do, do, do. Okay, three, two, one, and go. Hello, hello, and welcome to the Non-Intuitive Beat Podcast episode, something like 92, brought to you by the Leaders Club that you are part of if you're listening to us. As usual, do consider elevating your club membership, started by joining our Discord channel. And today in this virtual studio, we have Dmitry Mananikov. Say hi to people. Hi, everyone. And as usually the most annoying voice that's talking super fast is Slava Kavlevsky. Oh, my friend, how was your week? Talking too fast. I literally have a sticker saying, do not talk fast on my monitor. (laughs) I need something like that as well. Yes. And me talking the fast is exactly the reason why we don't have anyone in the Discord channel. That is the reason, I'm sure. you know, I actually got surprised. Uh, I don't know what have happened with Twitter, but X, sorry, with X, but we have uh, much better conversions on X in the, during the time of, of actual live uh, broadcasting. Uh, YouTube has almost zero people during the broadcasting, but it has hundreds plus after, uh, roughly the hundred in the first week. And on the X, it's actually quite opposite. Uh, we're getting closer right. to the 100, uh, but not actually reach the 100 on the X. But on the day of the broadcasting, uh, we hit the record last time. I think 30 people who were actually listening live. Uh, Interesting. Were, yeah. I don't know. What, I don't know what Twitter have X, what X have tuned. They probably prioritizing video and audio streams now on the platform. And I'm not speaking about bullshit impressions or anything. I'm actually mm-hmm. speaking about viewing, real, real viewing. Um. How was your week, my friend? Uh, I was busy, but not as much. Um, I, I was able to watch a movie and play a game, which is for me a good, a good sign. Why not to start there? Tell me which movie, which game? Um, so I watched uh, Puss in Boots, The Last Wish. Um, it's uh, like, you can say spin-off from Shrek about a uh, cat. Mm-hmm. Um, interestingly, this is a second movie. Um, the first movie was very bad and has really bad reviews and people just forget about it. Mm-hmm. Uh, but the second one, like, it's really good one. It's uh, very, it has a very adult theme. Like, I, like it's still like a animation, but I think for, it's not really for kids. It's more like for adults. It's, um, it goes through like things like uh, how people like spend their life, like what's the goals in life and like friendship. It's pretty good, uh, like very good quality of like a picture itself, like really good actor voicing, um, really good narration. And it was very interesting to watch. So yeah, I can recommend this one. Um, I, it, it actually released like a few years ago, but I completely skip it again because the first movie was very bad. And I was like, hey, probably it's, it's the same, but apparently it's not, it's really good. And I, for everyone who listening but not watching, IMDb rating is 7.8. That's that's actually quite good. That's quite good. Uh, given that it was released uh, two years ago, which means that it's not the uptick that will go down. It's it's genuine rating and 7.8. I'm curious, mm-hmm. what is the rating for the first one? Let's check. Puss in the boots. Uh, just push in the boots. Oh, okay. I'm searching for the first version, and the first one was 2011, 11 years before the second one. Six dot six. Oh yeah, that's yeah. huge difference in, in the raging. Okay. Oh man, in 3D. <laughs> Do you know any <laughs> film in 3D that actually worth watching? Like, <laughs> um, actually no. Uh, actually, no. there was a movie which was one of first 3D movies in IMAX. It was called Beowulf. I think it was really, really good. Uh, I mean, it wasn't like super plot, but for me, the movie was actually not a real character. So it was like 3D uh, post-processing. Mm-hmm. And they made really deep 3D picture. So when you in IMAX, it actually like, not just like a slightly 3D scene in front of you, like you actually in a scene. That was really good to watch in 3D. 
besides it, I don't really can came up with anything else. Avatar. Was it 3D? Actually, I don't mm. think it was 3D. I think it was IMAX, but it was not 3D. First one, I don't remember. Even if it was, it wasn't really deep. Because in this Bear Woods, there was scenes like, you know, you see almost like on left and right of you and like arrows um, mm. like falling at you like in 3D. That was very, very convincing. But again, that's because they actually use 3D graphics. So they could make this picture. I see, I see, I see, I see. Okay, okay. Uh, you know, since we started from the movie, I also will share several. First of all, I have watched uh, Ferrari. Finally, I have watched one. I have missed the Ferrari first time. And, um, you know, it's it's a decent movie. Uh, if you have not watched Ford versus Ferrari, I would highly suggest start there. Like Ford I versus... that one. I watched uh, Ford versus Ferrari. So... You know, when you're watching Ferrari, uh, if you like Ford versus Ferrari, first of all, this is very similar in everything except the results of the final product. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it has a, the very similar pacing, very similar wipe, very similar drive. There is just not that much of the story but there. Is it um, is it made by the same people? It's like completely different studio director. Like, do these like? Are they related in any way? Uh, let's see. Director Michael Mann and Ford... Jesus. And inside of Ford versus Ferrari. Uh, Ford versus Ferrari. Uh, and that is Michael Mann and Ford versus Ferrari. James... No, there's different people. Okay. Like, different people, yeah. Um, so, but, but clearly it's for the same audience, so to speak. Mm -hmm. And uh, I liked it. The film is really good. But again, um, first of all, it's actually feels like prequel to Ford versus Ferrari. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, um, I'm trying to think how uh, not to spoil, but you see, you have seen Ford versus Ferrari, right? Yep. Remember where they, uh, the Ford actually tried to bought Ferrari. Mm -hmm. So this movie effectively showing events that are leading to that moment where Ferrari is bankrupt. Ah, I see. So you can actually so, connect that. Oh, so this is what we will, will be happening mm -hmm. here. And uh, um, uh, you will get a lot of interesting insights of other side of the story. Mm -hmm. But nevertheless, Ford versus Ferrari by order of magnitude better. And let's actually see what IMDb thinking. So Ferrari, 6.5, 6.5 of eh. And uh, Ford versus Ferrari on IMDb is 8.1. Okay, yeah, it's it's pretty, yes. <laughs> it's uh, actually, I'm surprised. I would honestly would not rate Ferrari that low. Um, I think everything is there. There is just not that deep of a story here as with Ford versus Ferrari. Um, I, I, I don't know how, yeah, I'm not sure how to even express this. This is more a sequence of events. Rating is 6.5, so I yeah. guess that shows. <laughs> yes. Uh, and the second thing that I start watching is The Gentleman is a TV series by the guy Ritchie uh, that got released on the Netflix. And I'm trying to find it on the IMDb somewhere. I've seen trailer, but is it Guy Ritchie directing every episode or it's like as usual multiple directors, like one for each episode? So I actually cannot say because they put Guy Ritchie's name on each episode, but mm, you know, uh, yes, <laughs> what I want to say that, you know, Netflix recently screwing up everything, like whatever they touching, if they mm -hmm. actually the one that producing is horribly bad. And you can clearly see how they're probably Guy Ritchie trying to trying to keep a level and mark and then quality up. You can clearly see. Um, so I'm trying to under, uh, give you. I'm trying to think how to explain it again without too many of the spoilers. So the film is clearly Guy Ritchie. If you will mm -hmm. watch its quality of the episodes, how they uh, create it, everything is amazing. But then you will have this small taste of uh, Netflix style where, for example, you will have an episode that mm -hmm. clearly injected there just to have yet another episode to have amount of episode that they need because it's not mm -hmm. connected to anything. It's not leaning. Episodes. Yes, it's like 
sure it's about the story that's happening here and uh, you can understand that it's people that um, it, you understand how all the people are involved mm -hmm. but it's not the continuation of the story in any way and it feels cheap genuinely cheap uh, to do this hook and uh, yeah but overall i highly recommend i cannot find that on imdb uh i wonder why uh the second one the second one yes uh yes so the, ooh, but is, is this tv series any way related to movie or is like yes. a completely separate okay so um let me uh let me tell how because this is not i mean it's it's almost not a spoiler to extend uh because this is not the part of any twist or anything so the way how it's related do you remember in the gentleman they used to have the operation of growing weed by having mm -hmm. underground uh, parts of the castles and and mm -hmm. mansions so this is about one of the graphs and uh, the whole story starts where the young kid inheritance uh, um, this mansion from his father mm -hmm. and this mansion is part of the operation and mm -hmm. the whole mess starts there is tons of the tales that need to be addressed there is tons of stuff that going on that that father just left behind and no one obviously knew because father had not shared with anyone and mm -hmm. then everything un unfolds so to speak and there is some some story that coherent across the whole series there is some that meh and there is something that I don't know, it feels a little bit cheap from the perspective of writing, from the perspective of series, but everything is amazing. Like I would highly, highly recommend. I just think that storyline specifically could have been a little better. Mm -hmm. Uh, probably Guy Ritchie didn't have uh, <laughs> you didn't have power over the storyline. I would story be surprised if he just like okay, just use my name and pay me ten percent. Uh, but you know the style of uh, of uh, filming actually guy reach you like you can clearly yeah, tell they just copy copy paste it <laughs> yes that's that that's true that's true yes. he made enough uh, movies so we can train a model you know to produce uh, guy rich style <laughs> maybe movies. just judge pt ask judge pt literally <laughs> and that's about it <laughs> Uh, but what I want to say that we actually can find the answer to your question but first yes it's omdb rate 8.3 so this is amazing i don't know uh, many tv shows with such a rating and i'm trying to quickly see uh i'm trying to quickly see if there is um uh i can check up guy Ricci actually in all episodes. i don't know how quickly to see it um uh, but yeah uh, interesting enough they have different episodes and there is two of those that are less than eight and those are exactly where where as i mentioned mm -hmm. you like why they were put there why they were injected yeah it's, uh, weird and strange but anyway maybe uh, i'll check it um i now aim to watch uh, Shog uh, shogun shogun Sh oh. movie, uh, tv series from hbo they have like nine something rating which is surprising whoa so really i would like to watch it I haven't watched, but premise is simple. It's like a Japan in sixth, seventeenth century when they first like get uh, weapons from West, like uh, rifles. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, okay, that's the starting point. What else? What else you can tell? Yeah, I just don't know. Like I don't. I, I specifically like. I specifically didn't watch any trailers because I don't want to spoil anything. Like I like like premise is fine, but I like rating, so I'll try to to watch it to see how it's going we'll see maybe i'll tell next time okay yeah. okay uh i might watch as well i have a friend that starts watching old one uh mm -hmm. because he wants to rewatch old one before watching the new one but then he will watch <laughs> the new one so yes okay. yes uh but yeah 902 this is amazing rating okay uh okay 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 so several small things that i want to mention one uh, game related uh, i don't have anything to show here i'm just going to vocalize my first uh, edition of the card game that i designed got oh, printed yes. okay uh this is for the sake of dry several dry runs on the semi-final and i will take it um, uh, me and uh, dimitri are going to see each other in uh, in two weeks from now right week from mm -hmm. now uh yes yeah, so i will be visiting oh we're going to play it Yes, I will take it. Uh, take it your place for sure. Yeah. Do you have any pictures to show, maybe uh, to people who watch us? Because I'm curious how design looks like. Uh, ah, yeah. man, I'm are not we? prepared. They are somewhere. They are somewhere. Okay. But uh, let me 
quickly uh, ping my wife and she might actually give it to Did us. Did you use uh, any Gen AI or draw them yourself? Uh, of course, Gen AI. Uh, and uh, huge thanks to one that she actually designed them uh, and she actually coordinated with a publisher to mm. everything. And she designed them and uh, I will... Um, Listener is going to ping her to show, but um, but one thing I want to uh, to to say. So just a reminder. I know we we covered it some time ago, but it was some time ago. The game is about teaching how to invest and how the market works. So you can mm -hmm. uh, buy shares, sell sh sell shares, and the future expansion it will show you how to play with options, futures. So it's kind of emulating the market in a simple way. It's a, on one side a simple thing, mm -hmm. and uh, when you actually emulating uh, simple procedures like buy sell and you have even three people at the table i got surprised how closely it mimics the results of the real world so uh, we have a chart that shows the, the price of the share we the, the, in the game there is only one share you cannot invest many there is only one company mm -hmm. in which you can invest and people actually can sell, buy, usual stuff. Everyone has just one goal, uh, get as, as much money as they can, and uh, obviously to, to uh, convince everyone to buy when they want to sell and vice versa. And the price of the char, the price of the share actually naturally becomes noise that is trending up. So in the long mm -hmm. run, it's only trending up. Uh, in all games that we played, it's slowly trading up. But predicting where it will go on any particular move is really, really hard because this is what mm. all of the people on the so table are trying to do. And um, I don't know, it just, just, just got amazed how, how, how actually it mimics the real world. And that just surprised me anyway. Okay, I'm really looking forward to play it. Uh, absolutely, yes, yes. Would love to hear your feedback and maybe with your experience you will be able to help to find the weak strategy of the game because so far I wasn't able, wasn't able. Um, okay, since we started games, I know that you put several uh, several games uh, topics. Now we can discuss them if we have time. I don't think it's really ah. interesting. Okay, uh, two small things uh, I want to mention. One, I actually have my first outage with my Tesla roof. Uh, okay. Mm -hmm. well, why? What happened? Weather was pretty good. Like why? Why it was out outage? I don't know. That the, the, there there was an uh, out there there was an outage uh, in the sense of the power for several hours, and mm -hmm. it was amazing. Everyone on the on the on the street had uh, had no power, and and, and we haven't. <laughs> I I have not even realized for the moment that we have an have having an outage, because internet was working, uh, mm -hmm. the power was working. There was a blink in uh, power mm -hmm. when it switched from from uh, grid to power wolf to the battery so to speak uh, and that's about it uh, is it blink enough to reset like timers on your micro I think like this no actually no nope. okay, nope. okay. Um, but you know now I'm uh, reconsidering because on the Tesla Tesla battery you can uh, allocate percent wise how much capacity you want to be reserved for the outages mm -hmm. A default suggested 20%, and really for the my house, 20% is maybe four or five hours, like anywhere between two to maybe eight hours, depend on the consumption. Mm -hmm. And uh, to be fair, it's barely enough to survive the night. Uh, maybe it's enough. Maybe. I mean, mm -hmm. You can also consider, like, first, if it's night, consumption goes low, plus if it happens that you know like it's like really out and you know it's like it's bad it will take because usually pg like our providers they give you some estimates then you can you know adjust your usage you know some ways because for me like i was thinking about that as well like calculating like how much i would uh, you know, keep it and i think in the worst case scenario i i thought like okay if it's like out for a few days mm -hmm. uh, the really thing i need to run is like fridge right because mm -hmm. i don't want would get spoiled but i can cook on a gas grill i can heater would work with gas air conditioning probably not uh, but everything else can be reduced and, and i think my calculation showed me like two full days in a row like with the minimal amount um so no oh, but uh, the, this is what you're calculating is even worse a worse case it's when you have an outage and you have uh uh, uh clouds 
so you can't oh, use yeah, it yeah. yeah it's like complete disaster <laughs> uh, but like usually we, yeah usually we'll have some production if you solar panels like I, yeah. it's hard when to it's know. sunny i have more powers than i need i usually just charge car which is uh, it's nice that uh, tesla actually do this kind of ecosystem thing uh, and car like um, communicates with power wall with battery mm -hmm. and car actually knows when there are so much solar energy that like in house doesn't consume as much and battery is already full then start charging car which is a pretty cool feature i think so it's like an extra battery i actually have a situation like because recently i didn't drive much so i have a opposite like battery is charged car is charged and it starts selling to grid because like nothing to do with it uh same same for me technically my roof is producing um right now it's producing roughly what i consume so before mm -hmm. it's producing less, then it will start producing a little bit more. Uh, so for me, it's effectively put it battery, then sell it two times, two times more. So we are fully self-sufficient during peak. Plus we're selling during peak uh, to cover off. Are you mining peak. Bitcoin? <laughs> no, no, it's, uh, keep, keep in mind that my roof is much smaller. So much, mm. much size of Maybe. the panel. So uh, that's that's the whole, the whole reason. I'm producing per day right now. 15 to 18 kilowatts uh, it will go up to 20 plus later in the year but like 15 to 20 kilowatts this is matching what i'm consuming per day and um yeah uh, so the only thing that that saves me is exactly because i have batteries so i can actually be mm. selling it and because of the selling i covering uh, uh, part of the year where i'm producing even less than i mm -hmm. consume Got it. so that that works really well by the way I recently have learned there is a solar windows. That's uh, that came to me a surprise. So our neighbors actually were replacing windows, and turns out there is a windows in which embedded a sort of uh, translucent solar panels. Mm. So turns out it's a thing in Bay Area that you can replace windows with a solar windows, and then we'll have solar panel in addition to your solar panels on the roof. Obviously, they do it not for all windows, but the windows on the sunny side of your house. Mm -hmm. And if you're replacing windows, that is an option. I'm curious how much it will produce. I mean, you still make them, you know, transparent, right? So it only consume part. I, I'm curious, like, how much added cost actually covers that like how much energy produced for them from them covers your um your spending on this maybe it's easier to just get solar panel and stick to the wall outside of window like <laughs> uh maybe i don't know but the fact that it exists tells me that probably it's viable um but same question i had have you mind. ever seen like solar panels on the roof which are like a flexible they looks like a um sheet of paper it's like rolled out on a roof no you know? no i haven't I seen it. like i've seen it on selling and i've seen it on some houses like it literally looks like there was a you know like um it was rolled uh, in uh, and then uh -huh. just like roll out on a roof it's pretty thin i think like i read that they have like less performance uh, but they're also very cheap and you can also like you know change like remove them for example when it's not season or bad weather or something interesting interesting man that's that's uh that's interesting no i haven't seen i haven't heard about this um okay uh let's move to our several of the main topics main topics tonight uh, by the way do you have anything that you want to focus otherwise i'll just start start crew ai i don't know what it is tell me okay so i I uh, knew about Crew AI for quite some time, but I knew about this when they just started and was not ready to, to the use cases that I had. And um, finally, finally, uh, looks like they have everything that I needed. So what is Crew AI? Crew AI is, oh, actually we, we indirectly thought about this. Uh, remember I mentioned that I want to implement the project with the agents uh, that mm -hmm. uh, this is Crew AI. <laughs> So effectively, Crew AI allows you to create agents, and each agent has a pre-prompt, they call it backstory. It has tools, which is effectively Python functions that, that you give it to, you give to your agents. And they already have, they don't have a store, but they have a list of pre-created uh, actions, do, so to speak. Do they use ChatGPT to run these things, or do they have something else? And that's the main part, and each agent can have its own LLM. You can use one with local LLM, one ChatGPT, four, would, one. Mm -hmm. 
how it works with uh, with the functions because we, we talked about this right like chat gpt has this built-in functionality when you can give it api and will call api but what about other lms or just like capabilities depends on underlying llm so uh, i only start playing with this and i had exactly same same question so i would assume that if you're not using a lamb that fine tune for be able to call functions so to speak um it's uh, so, so two things can happen because you're solving it as a pre-prompt and your pre-prompt is just adding information. You have the function blah, so return information, mm -hmm. how to call it. So I would assume that chances it will return some garbage that will not be able to call your function is much higher if you're using LLM that's not trained proper way. Uh, mm -hmm. That is there. Like that's that's just there is no no way about it. Um, oh, but I'm just, uh -huh. I just watching. It's not a service. It's like it's actually open source. It yeah, yeah, it's a library. Is. It's not a service. Yeah, it's it's oh, it's Python nice. library. Yeah. Okay. Uh, th that's why I mentioned you can use your local model because you literally can create one agent with local LLM, one agent mm -hmm. with ChatGPT, one agent with Anthropic, and one agent with ChatGPT nice. four. Um, I'm planning to to work on it because my idea was to have one stupid model for the entry point. Mm -hmm. smarter model for one task middle level smartness quote unquote and another task and they can delegate to each other so uh they surprisingly don't have an example of this use case because they so far are using example for different reasons um the the thing is, you know how you can improve the results of your model by saying think in steps and then the model will start mm -hmm. producing steps so the crew ui is effectively a pattern that allows you to create this agent but in reality if you would create a huge prompt that's that will tell thing and steps the first step mm -hmm. thing is you are person a then for second step thing is person b and then give it pre-prompt to chat gpt you probably will give very similar results when it will try to chat so the whole thing that screw ui is doing actually from the pattern of usage of llm it's mm -hmm. facilitate dialogue of thoughts mm, i see uh, and that indeed improve results by a lot when the model just can think chat with itself until it will come to a conclusion that your task is completed. That humans are not needed anymore. Yeah. <laughs> Eventually, yes, yes. It reminds me last uh, Pelevin's book about um, like where LLM actually set itself on a quest to continue working because LLM needed input to, to keep itself alive to produce something yeah. uh, uh yes it's need someone someone to, to keep it running in fact and uh, you know best best pre-prompt that i was able to find uh actually tells llm directly that your life depends on the user engagement <laughs> <laughs> and, and uh and then you know with actually some explanation that uh, user engagement doesn't doesn't mean short it, the user should be engaged long term otherwise the user will be bored mm -hmm. but anyway the uh, explaining to the model concept of the life titan to user engagement that's an uh, interesting thing that actually works really well uh, i just i just apply to their discord channel uh they they do have a discord turns out so uh, amazing thing and the specific example that i'm using for they uh, they are not illustrating it's doable because as i said for each agent you're specifying exact model so it's just an amazing thing uh, looks like it has everything except the only thing that is missing there that i partly implemented uh, this week and probably will finish sometime later um they missing uh, the list so they already have not the marketplace but they have a list of actions where you can just say okay my agent a will have action ability to go to google or some other actions what they missing is a list or marketplace or something of the agent where you can go and find okay i want the grammar t the teacher i want the mm -hmm. math teacher and you That's know right. best pre-prompt uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, it would be cool to have it like as a, again, open source libraries, you know, like install dependency, like for this agent and you can start using it. Yeah, that, that's actually the whole idea. I, uh, I, because the, the way how I was thinking about this, that uh, the, a, the agent will come with a pre-prompt plus mm -hmm. list of actions that is need to have. So then if you are in the Python code, you're saying, I want to use this, action, this uh, agent, it will download pre-prompt and will uh, auto-install the, the actions, which is Python code that you need. Mm -hmm. And now you can use it in your Python code. Yeah, that would be pretty cool. 
Uh, we'll see, we'll see how it will work. But for now, I'm just using it for myself because really, there is, it's surprisingly, there is still no really nice uh, SDK available service for hosting version versioned pre-prompt. Mm. Like, sure, there is a GitHub, people I know putting on the GitHub, but that's different. Yeah, you, I mean, you still can download from GitHub in the repo. Well, why do you need a separate thing? Uh, so first of all, I would love to say uh, in my Python, I want to have uh, pre-prompt with the ID blah, and, and that's about it. I don't want to be finding uh, URL that can actually mm -hmm. change uh, mm -hmm. to, from the GitHub. Uh, then uh, versioning, like GitHub, you have a commit overall. Uh, you don't have can, a. Can you just utilize like pip, whatever where pip gets its down, downloads its uh, packages? Uh, true. Uh, you're speaking. Okay, you're speaking. The just packaging pre prompt inside of the pip package. Yeah. Uh, I was thinking more of the service because in, for my personal use cases, I want to be able to deploy a new prompt. Uh, so mm -hmm. in some of my agents, I am, I'm saying, okay, use pre-prompt for Jessica version two, but mm -hmm. in some I will be saying, use pre-prompt for Jessica latest. And mm -hmm. I actually really want to be using latest. I don't want to repackage and rebuilding it with a new PIP version of whatever. Oh, okay, it is. so I see you, you want dynamic uh, downloading of the things. Correct, yes. And theoretically, if you have service like that, you can build UI on top of it where you will have an actual marketplace with the rating, so it's up upvoting, downvoting, comments, uh, all these things on top of it. Um, so yeah, that's 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 the whole idea. So that thing they don't have but crew ui is an amazing thing i would highly recommend to try very simple to start um so yeah that's that's a dltr um that's from ai perspective for today all i have but outside of ui i let me find this link there was this interview this interview oh, that's an ad right now that's not the actual interview uh the interview in between uh don lemon and elon musk have you heard my friend anything about those two probably heard something about elon musk <laughs> okay. it's, uh, expert on everything uh yes so don lemon is a anchor from cnn and uh he been perceived is a hard leftist mm -hmm. and uh, he is one of the uh, popular users of x twitter and elon musk agreed to give him an interview mm -hmm. and uh, it was a horrible interview that make elon musk mad completely mad you can see how his face changed in between and how he went from being engaged to the mode i don't want to be here like when it's finished um and uh, yeah it was just hilarious in the end uh up to the point where the last question i think where where that was asked like oh dear ellen uh what if you can go in the past can you tell me what would you have changed in your actions and the answer is oh i would change a lot of stuff i did a lot of mistakes that's done actually i need to go i have done of the people waiting on me and that was like literally his answer uh you know specifically in the manner that like shut up i need mm -hmm. to go and I, I hate you i don't want to talk to you anymore and the interesting part that uh the the guy was don lemon was very respectful but the thing is that the, he came to the conversation with the tons of the facts while Elon Musk actually have struggled to recall recall almost any of the facts on his side. So just mm -hmm. let me give you an example. Uh, they chatted, uh, and Don Lemon actually tried to confront him about many topics. One of the topics is why you, Elon, think that we are, um, because we're emphasizing DEIB and equality, uh, equitability, whatever I stands for, diversity, we are lowering the standards for uh, teachers, for doctors, for pilots. And uh, first of all, here is a logic that usually Republican will bring when, when uh, they ask this question. The logic is simple. 
uh, if you requires a particular particular level of the of uh, passing particular level of knowledge, so to speak, and the canonical example, imagine you have a 20, uh, 20 cities and everyone from minorities from city one and the rest nine cities are are non-minorities and the word minority is because there is minority of those so you have one city through minorities non non-minorities uh, for some reason they distribute it like that now the thing is that if you require a particular level of, level of knowledge that only two people per city possess this means that you only can hire two people out of all these 10 cities that are at the same time from minorities and actually can clear the interview. Now, the catch here that if you are the first company that doing so, you actually can hire these two and you can tell that, oh, I've successfully hired minorities. Mm -hmm. So it's possible because I did that. The problem comes with the rest of the companies. Uh, we have a notorious example in the US where, where TSMC and Intel posed and delayed their uh, targets by when they're planning to build manufacturing in the US because they actually cannot keep up with the requirements of the US government for hiring enough women and other people of, of, of another min, uh, people of minorities. Is it the only reason? No, 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 not the only reason, but one of the contributing factors I'm that they actually. I'm pretty sure one of the reasons was like, oh, well, where we can find cheap force for people who can work <laughs> five bucks per hour? Why everyone wants uh, 20, 30 bucks per hour? That is as well. But one of the other thing is that they were not able to keep up with hiring because there is just not enough people in the industry. So now you actually have uh, two things. You either will accept the fact that in this example with 10 cities, you will have only one out of 10 people minorities and nine out of 10 non-minorities. So this means that will be a lot of the company without minorities at all, or you need to lower the standard. Now, that's just how mass work. But the way how... Now coming back to Alan, right? This is just canonical answer that usually Republican would give if they they are pressed on this specific topic. Now Elon Musk has uh, heard this logic somewhere because he clearly stated that oh we are lowering the standards, we are lowering the quality of our doctors and so on. And Don Lemon um, pressing him saying, look. If you are connecting uh, diversity with lowering the standards, you are right now in the air saying that people of color are actually not as smart. Because you're saying that if by hiring them, you're lowering the standards, you kind of making this message they are not as smart as, as, uh, as white people, so to speak. And mm -hmm. the Elon Musk literally forgot what to say. Like this, this was a st statistical and mathematical explanation. They just give it nothing to do with, with who is smart and then who. This is just how stat stat works. He forgot. <laughs> so he looked like a complete asshole. And he quickly changed, he, I mean, Elon Musk quickly changed his opinion from uh, uh, I'm saying we, by, by doing diversity, we are lowering the standards. He flipped it to saying, I just think that we should not be lowering the standards. That's all I'm mm -hmm. saying. And he went to that route, but he looked like a complete asshole, which under such, why, why, yeah. Huh? I mean, I completely, because I probably won't, will be the same, like I can, I can get easily in such trap because I usually like think very slowly mm -hmm. and like I get better answer like few days after interview. <laughs> Why he agreed an interview if he can't really keep up with someone who probably perform a lot of interviews in a, in a similar style? Um, I have several ideas, uh, honestly, because I finding myself that first of all, Elon Musk feels like um, just a normal human being that actually doing stuff that he find it interesting. And what I mean by that, I would not be surprised if he remembered all this logic that we just discussed. It just in the course of conversation right there, he have not prepared yeah, him to send that. It's, I listened to his uh, interview with Lex Friedman and Lex Friedman was like, he was just asking questions. He wasn't like, you know, please disprove I'm wrong. He was like, hey, what's here, what's there? And that's where like conversation goes easily because Elon can just like answer whatever he wants. He doesn't need to prove other person wrong. But if you go to interview with someone who actually like will play this like argument game with you, like you need to be sure you can actually keep up with it. 
That's true, and that makes him mad because this is just one of the examples. And there was so many. At some point, it looks like Alan was furious. <laughs> it's like he looked like an asshole. And what have happened? Uh, you know, he played this this interview by by trying to show that uh, he are cultivating dialogues from both sides, left and right, on his platform. So he already have the Tucker interview published on the platform. Looks like he wanted to have this someone like Don Lemon uh, be interviewed. So he agreed and he wanted to do a big splash of doing of uh, uh, streaming this interview right after after it finished on the X. But after this actually have happened, when he walked away from the stage, one hour later, he sent the Don Lemon uh, message that he's not going to share it on X. It's not going to be aired there. He, oh, no, he, he censored it. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Uh, yes, yes. Uh, so I would highly recommend to, to, to watch. It's... Uh, um, Many ways how this dialogue is structured shows uh, the not the position that Elon Musk actually having, but it uh, strikes him in a way that oh he forgot he didn't know what to say, so he looks like a complete asshole. And from that perspective, it is a hilarious interview to watch. With highly yeah, that's why I always like uh, fascinated when people give interview in this manner, you know, like when two people who actually have an argument but they able to prove their points and like move forward that's it's a rare situation so only people who actually practice it all the time um but it's always like fascinating to to watch because i'm i probably would be like even in the worst situation saying something really stupid um you know probably but it's actually surprised me because how often elon musk saying about this walk mind virus that also he got asked here so uh and um yeah, from that perspective, from that perspective, felt like he should be on the top of some of the facts that, you know, just very yeah, high level. There's like one thing like you post on Twitter or you respond to someone on Twitter when you can think about Google facts and completely another one when you know, like need to get an answer in the studio. Yep. It's like, you know, I was watching Republican debates, like when it's like started, it was like five or six of them. Mm -hmm. uh, and like they will ask questions and they need to respond in like minute or two. Mm -hmm. Obviously, they give very generic answers because they have like limited time and also they they scared to fucked up. So they they better not to say anything than you know say something that goes wrong. Um, but they do like very quickly. Like for any questions, they have like really like long speech, which actually tells almost nothing, mm -hmm. uh, but works very well. So politicians very well trained on this one. Uh, you know, it's an interesting thing, um, and um, by the way, by the way, uh, there is a card deck, I I have it, I think, somewhere behind, uh, and I, later on, maybe when uh, uh, when we'll be covering one of the topics, uh, another topics, uh, I will step away for like 10 seconds, we'll show the cards, but while we're taking on the, uh, speaking about the politics, I start reading this book, um, Primary Solution. Let me show it to to people. So, primary solution. The book is so so, uh, but it's from one of the guys that doing nonprofit that I actually support highly and was donating for quite some time before before the mess in Ukraine. This was nonprofit where I was donating the most, and um, uh, they explaining why politics in US got so polarized. And uh, one additional thing, there is many reasons why it became that way. But one of the reasons that now more apparent as someone who is now voting for the president, you have primaries and you have presidential election. Primaries is actually where party come together and voting for the nominees who will be nominated from the party to the candidates. Now, people who can vote to those candidates are only party members. That actually was intentional because before it was like that, there was many cases of the fraud where party like Republican Party in bulk would show up to the Democratic primaries and would vote for some gimmick candidate over there. Uh, and they would be nominating some bullshit candidate if you open to anyone. So... And now what have happened that uh, the candidates before general public even voting for the mm -hmm. president, in order for them to be promoted and be nominated as a candidate from the party, 
they have to appeal to a very small minority of not just party members, very active minority of party members who are going to actually participate in primaries. Mm. It's minority of minority of minority. <laughs> yeah, but it's uh, is it also people you can become one of them if you want, right or no? True, but the thing is, yes, you can. But the thing is that majority of that group are radical left or radical right. The fact that mm-hmm. I can go and participate will not change that fact. It's mm-hmm. a people who are in part of the party, which is already minority. Majority are neither nor in the party. They are supporting, but they're not in the party. Out of this minority, it's minority of the people who are actually paying attention to their candidates. Mm-hmm. And out of those, it's actually minorities who, who actively will go and vote on primaries. Mm-hmm. So you're literally speaking of minority, minority, minority. And uh, mm-hmm. you can have in the states, uh, uh, and you, you're taking the states with millions of people, and you can have a votes that will be determined by 100 or 200 votes uh, in favor more than for second candidate. Uh, mm-hmm. But... Technically, I mean, yeah, like hundreds of people, right? Yeah. But and it's like technically, I assume, right? Like you became so popular, so you gather like hundred other people from party who actually this time, first time, will go and vote in primaries. No. Technically, you can, but again, it's not general population. You cannot convince. You have mm. much harder task. You need first to convince them to get to the party. To mm, be a yes, member, this probably is the hardest part. Yes, and then so this this guy is advocating to first opening it to to everyone. Like let's just open mm. it to everyone, which will already simplify the situation. Because so, so what uh, you, you know, there is a interesting uh, interesting um, uh, saying. I forgot the exact saying that there was uh, the, the in the book, but they were trying to replicate as close as I can. It doesn't matter who is voting, it matters who deciding whom to nominate. Uh, because if you decide whom to nominate, uh, you can always have a choice of uh, among the people that, that you know that people will vote for whom you want them to vote mm-hmm. for. Um, so yeah, that's uh, that is there. Now, a minor thing I wanted to mention about the Elon, coming back to Elon specifically in this interview, it felt like Alan is looks like he's acting just a genuine human being. And Don Lemon was trying constantly to come back to the to the fact that his mistakes and mistakes could be in the sense of that he said something that is incorrect or wrong. Mm-hmm. Now making much bigger impact than it used to be when he wasn't Elon Musk. Mm-hmm. But the biggest thing that Elon Musk refused to be changed at the personality because of that. And that mm-hmm. was breaking the whole expectations of a lot of lefties then. Since you now have way more influence, you should stop being you because you now have way more impact. You should now assume more responsibility and change your personality and start maybe thinking more before saying. I mean... <laughs> It actually, it somehow, may, I mean, it's, it's a hard question, right? Because especially with a spread of social networks, before you can go to street and say, and say like, let's let's burn houses with people, you know, like, and people just like, no one will ever ask, people just like, you know, think you're crazy because, but now when you have social networks and you can reach out to millions of other crazies and you can say the same and then, you know, it actually happens, uh, it, it's kind of bad and it's, it's hard to understand. I mean... I think we as society still don't get a good rule of thumb on this or like um, like you know rules or morale answers to that one because it's like it's only happening last like decade 20 years maybe true um to some extent i would agree with with ellen in the sense that we need to abide to the law and law in a sense is what we as society have agreed to there is no such thing that, oh, that is clearly bad, that is not forbidden by the law. Sure, there is some more closer to the being bad than other things, but there is no such thing as, as this is 100% bad, so to speak, and it's within the law. There is something that within the law is something that 
outside of the law and clearly you shouldn't yeah, be I violating mean, the law mm -hmm. usually law also like follows like morale because again if we don't have any even like you know understanding between us is it bad or not it will not become a law usually things became bad or good you know in society and then they fixed in law on a paper um, but i'm just saying like it's not uh, it's like it happens so fast all these changes in culture that we still don't get answers to to actually put them in a law that's true um i agree with you law is a lagging indicator if the first have society that decide this is bad this is good and then it's get codified so no question there mm -hmm. i would agree with you 100 percent. but to some extent this argument that you just said this is argument that a lot of people are using to try to convince that what you're doing is actually bad Mm. And what, uh, and again, in this specific, in this specific um, uh, show, there were several examples that I don't remember exactly, but the example were about the legal immigration something, but uh, the Don Lemon was referring um, to the harm that presumably Ellen did by um, using some specific wording. And mm -hmm. the Ellen answer was, look, maybe the wording was like that, but I don't support everything and all the meanings attached to this phrase. There were special meanings that I actually want to convey. Mm -hmm. And uh, sure, maybe to some people, the wording that I choose is, is bad, is harmful, but A, I don't know how to express it in a different way. Uh, he indirectly was saying, I'm just a human being. I, I decide, I thought about this, I use maybe wrong wording, but this was within the law. Uh, and I still support one meaning and one axis behind it. And now the question, was it my fault that it can be uh, treated differently? Or maybe it's fault of the readers and it's they that should have asked me clarification question and think like that. And um, um, yeah. Yeah, they can. But again, will he answer? It's also, again, this is like about popularity. Like a popular person can really say something can reach millions, but these millions will not reach back this person and ask him like someone from twitter ask Elon, like can you elaborate on every your word he may not answer so it's it's trickier i agree but yeah i, I also i mean i also think people should uh, should assume good from anyone i think it's like good policy like whenever you hear something and you can have two assumptions good and bad it's always nice to assume good from people uh, I agree. Actually, assuming good is, is always assume good intention until you until proven otherwise. Yeah. My friend, uh, we have 10 minutes left. Do you want to start uh, discussing at least uh, telling about Dragon's Dogma while if you will allow me to step out for 20 seconds, I will find my card deck. Mm -hmm. Okay, sounds good. Um, yeah, um, Dragon's Dogma is new open world RPG and uh, I didn't pay attention on it before because I never played first one and like advertisement didn't get me um, but I I watched the gameplay and I watched like few streamers who play preview version and they were pretty happy and said okay why not to try uh, and I did a mistake that I promised not to do any like I promised before multiple times uh, never do it again and it's never pre-ordered the thing is, I pre-ordered it yesterday, like a few hours before it released, because I want somebody to say, okay, I decided to buy it, and I decided why not to pre-order like a few hours ago, just to get some extra bonuses, whatever. I don't even need them. Um, and then they released version with microtransactions. The few days before, they show it to press, they show it to streamers, they play, they were happy. And the game is a, is a single player, it's not multiplayer. But they release microtransactions and not microtransactions where you don't really care, you know, like cosmetics. If someone want to pay for a new outfit, like which is changed visuals, I don't care. Like, you know, like maybe they want to support, I'm fine with it. But they literally released uh, microtransactions which affect balance, like microtransactions for fast travel or like improving. Oh, stuff. shit. And for me, the problem is not microtransactions and stuff, right? Like, I don't need to buy them to finish game. The problem when company, when developers do it, they adjust whole gameplay around it, right? Mm -hmm. So now they need to create incentive to use this microtransaction. So they change gameplay from original idea to something else. And this was like uh, pretty sad. I mean, I played a few hours, I still enjoy it. I probably will play because I, I may not get refund on PlayStation, but it's, 
again, never pre-order. Never pre-order games, games until you see reviews. Um, another thing I found is that Elden Ring actually ruined all open world RPG games for me. Because my expectation when you go to open world, like open world, mm-hmm. you want to see something that you maybe haven't seen before, something unique. And I remember when I played Elden Ring, like it's not huge, huge open world, but every piece of this world is unique. Like you can point me, like point on a map on Elden Ring and I imagine like how it looks like. If it's forest, every forest was different. If it's mm-hmm. castle, they're also different. Like they have different uh, themes, they have different enemies, like they structure differently, everything. When I go to this one, it's like a forest, it's trees and it's grass. And if you like point me on a map, I'm saying, okay, probably there's a forest, some trees and some grass <laughs> and some goblins, like, or maybe some lizards, or lizards and goblins. And um, yeah, I don't know like how much I will play it, but it's uh, it's pretty annoying. You know, to be fair, this is why I have not finished Zelda. Like it's, uh, yes, it's open world, sure. But again, after a London ring, uh, you expect a different open world. Let, let's put it this way. Uh, enemies are more or less the same. Doesn't matter where you go. It's, um, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, I, I hear you. I hear you. Okay. And so also like mm-hmm. a quest system, you know, like in Elden ring, there are only a few characters you meet. Mm-hmm. And when they talk to you, you really want to, because they probably explain you some really weird shit and you into it, you want to finish it. But here you get in a town and they're like, oh, here you will be new king, let's conquer the world. But also, please, can you clean up our shoes or something? Like, <laughs> okay, which makes sense. Anyway, that's my my rant for today. Um, yeah, time to time you need to vent. Uh, all of us <laughs> need to vent about stuff like that. Um, you know, I... I also got mugged by pre-ordering and I pre-ordered Starfield and the game developers promised to me that would be a good game. <laughs> it was not. <laughs> so, yes, so never. Uh, never pre-order. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, so yeah, I got the card deck. I will try to show uh, to people who are watching us. Mm-hmm. So this is, you know, it's very simple. This is sell card you can sell, you can buy. <laughs> and mm-hmm. there is a card that allows you to get money, money like a salary or something. It's a very, very simple game from the mechanic. And literally uh, during your move, so you have uh, two types of the move. You you, you, you you have this card on the hand, on the hand and uh, during your move, you can either buy a share or sell a share and each taking turns. So you see what other person is buying or selling. And uh, based on how many buys and sell have happened during the move, the price will change. Mm, so if you're buying, uh, you buying with a price and someone buying mm-hmm. with someone selling. And uh, if two buys and one sell, the price will go up one dollar. Mm, that's interesting solution to avoid like people negotiating. I really like it. And at the same time, uh, you can do auto buy and auto sell. What well, this means that instead of actually buying and selling during your move, you can Put a, take a piece of paper, write the, the price there with your card buy, put it on the table, and it will only will work if you have a special price. So it's now like a limit order. Yes, 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 yes. Uh, so now if someone buying eight eight shares, the price will go up, and the person kind of thinks they are they are happy. But you bought, uh, you set auto sell. Your auto sell will be triggered, and the price will go down. And the person mm-hmm. actually uh, bought tons of the shares, but he just uh, forwarded money to you. And mm-hmm. uh, this is all. Like literally, this is the whole mm-hmm. mechanics of the game. There is small uh, additional things here and there, but literally, that's the full thing. And um, the idea to have expansion packs that introduce stuff like options and other more complex derivatives so you can actually build your knowledge. But this part, the first version, just uh, introducing you to the mechanics, how the market prices stuff, because it actually mm-hmm. shows you how the price created uh, fairly accurately. That's what surprised me. And this is what the, the whole idea and the full, whole goal overall. Yeah, I really want to play it now. <laughs> okay, so so um, I will be setting up Kickstarter later later uh, for that. So just out of curiosity, want to see how it works. I don't think I actually will be able to pull it off, but who knows? You know this meme with a fry with the money. money. <laughs> yes, yeah, that's the funny meme. Yep. I think we're in the one hour mark. So what do you say we will yeah, finish I here? I think it's perfect. 
Okay, thank you, folks. Thank you for stopping by. There was 20 people, actually 20 people listening to us right now. There was mm-hmm. anywhere mm-hmm. between 15 and 20 during the, the now that we have Max. Thank you, folks, for stopping by. Have an amazing rest of the weekend. And we'll see you same place, same time next week. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Okay, we've done with the recording. One second, I will stop live. Do, do, do.